thank you very much. Our first reader tonight is Patrick O'Neill, a writer, filmmaker, and former stick-up kid. Uh, Patrick recently completed his memoir, Opacity, which is about his former life as a junkie bank robber. Please give a warm welcome to Patrick O'Neill. Let me give a little setup. This uh, this is in San Francisco, this is 1997. Uh, junkie bank robber, uh, uh, you know, a little out of control, and uh, uh, sort of uh, this piece. Oh, sorry. And this piece is sort of uh, you know says that out of control part. And this is me and my girlfriend Jen. That's why you need to know. Okay. This is called for chance to dream. The dope man won't come to our house. Either for me, even the lure of selling a quarter ounce won't get him here. Some nights he's like that. I make plans over the phone to meet the hate. Grabbing money, cigarettes, and lighter. I tell Jenny I'll be back in a while and walk to the door. Sitting on my desk is a 38. I pick it up and slip it in my coat pocket. It's cold out. The wind off the bay cuts through me as I wait at the bus stop. Fuck. Wish I had enough for a cab. Across the street, my neighbor comes home. With an aid of an automatic door opener, he effortlessly drives his Range Rover into the garage. I can hear a television from one of the apartments in a nearby building. Someone laughs. People are talking. I curse them under my breath for having a good time. I've only enough money for dope and a bus ride. We're going through cash fast. Every couple of days, I have to pull another robbery. It seems like there's never enough money. The bus slowly makes its way towards me. I get on pay the fare, and sit behind a couple discussing the movie they just finished watching. I try to remember the last movie I saw in the theater, and can't recall what it was. I can't remember the last video I was able to watch without nodding out. The bus drive goes on forever. I stare out the window and tell me to stop. Then I get off, find a payphone, call the dealer, and walk a few blocks to wait. It's freezing. My leather jacket is useless against the cold. The lining is torn. The front zipper is broken. It may be spring, but that means shit all nothing in San Francisco. When the sun goes down, the fog comes in, the temperature drops. 20 minutes later, the dope man shows up. I score, walk back to wait for the bus. I'm cold, I'm tired, almost out of cigarettes. I touch the lump of dope in my pocket, making sure it's still there. I shift my jacket to the right, the way the gun pulls in the opposite direction. The bus comes. I get on and sit in the back by the window. Three kids, a few seats in front of me, are talking loud and shoving each other. They look high school age, but these days it's hard to tell. One of them pushes the other, and he falls across the aisle onto an older woman who's holding a bag of groceries on her lap. She screams, and the driver stops the bus and yells at the kids. I'm gonna pull this bus over and call the police if you don't want to mess you stop me messing around, he says. All the white have to call the cops who looks to be about six feet or more and weigh well over 200 pounds? I don't know. I don't know why. Looks like he can take care of himself and then some. All I'd have to do is get up and toss the kids out the back door. Man, fuck you, says one of the kids. I stare at him in disbelief. The bus driver's not somebody I'd mess with. The kids look around, making sure everybody heard him. Looks back, sees me staring, and makes a face. What are you looking at? He says, and his friends slap. This kid is obviously an idiot. He really doesn't know what he's doing. The only two people not to fuck with on this bus, the driver and me. The last few months, I've been fantasizing about killing people. Sometimes it's uncontrollable. I get these strong urges just to fuck somebody up. I clench my teeth and feel my face go flush. I want to beat the living shit out of this kid. Reading through my nose, I lock eyes with him. The bus creaks and groans. I cross my legs and sit low in the seat. I think of the gun in my pocket. I think of the dope in my other pocket. I think about having to deal with the police. I look out the window and notice I'm shaking. The driver turns to the steering wheel. The bus shimmies as he weaves through traffic. Over the sound of the motor, I hear the kids talking. The louder one saying, oh, I ain't shit. Another one stares at me over his shoulder and then looks away. A few minutes later, all three get up and start to walk to the back door. The older one with the groceries moves over to her seat, away from the center aisle. The driver pulls the bus to the curb and they begin filling out. Fuck you, bitch, says the kid just before he ducks up. 
I can see the driver's face as he looks in the rearview mirror. Shaking his head, he goes back to driving. I feel the anger rising up inside him. I close my eyes and dream of shooting the kid in the head. His brain splattered across the inside of the bus. I shoot him just as he opens his mouth before he can say a word. I replay the image over and over again. Suddenly, it's not the kid anymore. It's me. And the cop smiles and pulls the trigger. The bullet's ripping through my, my chest. With a start, I suck in my breath and open my eyes. I've been having vivid dreams of getting shot. At night in bed, when I close my eyes, I see cops. Their guns pointing at me, the smell of cordite and blood in my nostrils. I can't help but feel it's a premonition. My heart is pounding. I lick my lips, look out the window. It's my stop. I get up and walk to the door, noticing I'm clenching my jaw. I relax my bite and feel a headache coming on. A strong gust of wind blows dust to my face like get off the bus. On the corner is a phone booth. I wipe my mouth and eyes with my sleeve, go inside, pick up the phone and dial the number to my house. After three rings, Jenny picks it up. I'm so fucking pissed, I tell her. What happened? Some fucking punk kid on the bus, I say. Is that all? I thought dude didn't show up with the dope. Come on, baby, don't let some kid bother you. She's right. I know she's right. I've been getting so angry lately. Outside, the wind is blowing. I watch cars passing the street. Lean my head against the side of the booth. I hear Jenny breathing and I relax my grip on the phone. You're right, I say. You're right. Where are you, she asks. I'm on the corner. I'm almost home. We need cigarettes and the cat needs food. The cat needs food? Of course, baby. She's got to eat, says Jenny. I ain't got it. What, she says? I want to tell her I don't have any more money. I want to tell her I'm cold and just want to come home. I want to tell her I'm tired of pulling robberies. I'm scared shitless. I'm getting anxiety attacks. I'm dreaming of police shooting me. I think I'm fucking going insane. I almost shot a kid tonight, baby. Nothing, I say, and hang up. Across the street is a small mom pop market. Almost every day I go in there to buy cigarettes. I look up and down the street before crossing. A familiar looking man comes out of the store as I approach. I look at the ground, avoiding eye contact. Keep my face in the shadows. Hesitating, I look to the left and then right and walk inside while pulling out the gun. <clears throat> the woman behind the counter stares at me and doesn't move. A Chinese language program plays on a black, small black on my TV beside her. Give me a card, a camel filters, a couple cans of cat food, and all for money, I tell her. <laughs> I know you, she says. Camel, money, cat food, I yell at my head, feeling like it's going to explode and I shout. I'm not wearing a mask. This woman recognizes me. I live four blocks away. I'm in a hole. I want a cigarette. I want a shot of dope. In my mind, I can see a cop standing behind me, guns drawn, ready to fire. You live in the neighborhood. You buy from me, she says, holding her hands up in the air. Why do you do this? I point the gun at her face and say nothing. She opens the cash register, pulls out money, grabs a carton of camel filters, and puts it all in the bag. Cat food on shelf, she says. She hands it to me. I walk over, grab two cans, and run out the door. Fillmore Street is deserted. I walk towards my apartment. The bag feels heavy. I'm exhausted. I have a gun in the corner of the dope in my equipment pocket. I just robbed the store and I really don't give a fuck. I pull out my cigarettes and stop in the door and light one. Dropping the empty pack on the ground, I turn around and look down the street. No one's coming after me. There's no sirens, no cop cars, only the sound of wind blowing. I take a drag of the cigarette and walk home. Thank you.